tonight. Rangers are ready, and so are the fans. Hoping for a chance to make history a European trophy and the biggest fiesta Seville has ever seen. I don't think it hit me until this morning when I woke up. Yeah. I was like, oh, we're here, we're here, we're here. Oh, yes. Here in Seville, Rangers supporters vastly outnumber those from Frankfurt and those lucky enough to have bought or blagged tickets are on their way to the stadium. This is where the Rangers players can write their names into the history books, the Ramon Sanchez Pathuan Stadium, the venue for tonight's Europa League final. And it may not be sunny Seville, but fans back here in glorious Glasgow are gearing up for the game tonight. I'm John Mackay. This is the STV News at Six, live from Seville. Good evening from Spain and the Auditorio Rocio Juardo in Seville. 8,000 fans are heading here this evening. Thousands of other lucky ones are heading into the stadium here in Seville. Tens of thousands of others are filling the city in any bar or restaurant they can find. This has been a journey night, no other for the fans. For the players, it's a chance to make history a complete a European adventure that began way back in August in a way that no one really expected might happen. Sheila McClam has been finding out more. This is the night Rangers fans have been waiting for. Seville has been taken over by the Ibrox side supporters and they're going to savour every moment. More nervous because we don't have tickets right now. We're still trying to get tickets, but that's probably not going to happen. But hey-ho, we're here for the party. It's absolutely unbelievable. And we deserve it. It's not been fluky. It's, we won against the German sides twice before. This should be a wee bit easier, this one. Very, very nervous. nervous. It's a pity it's not an afternoon kick-off because we've now got all day to wait. Like, oh, my goodness. Injury hasn't stopped Rangers striker Alfredo Morelos joining in the fun here in Spain as he led supporters through the streets. It's expected up to 100,000 Rangers supporters will be in and around Seville today. But with only 18,000 getting access to the stadium, tickets are like gold dust and some have been changing hands for thousands of pounds. I tried everyone I knew in Scotland. I, asked, I used to work at Ibrox, so I asked everyone I knew. Didn't manage to get one, so then I spent an exorbitant amount on getting a ticket. And I'm quite happy I did. One ticket, that's all I need. One ticket to get to the final and see Rangers. I've been offered a, a few tickets, but because they want you to buy quite a lot, uh, four or five tickets. But I've got friends that have just arrived, so I think it might get in there. We might get some luck. And the cost of getting here means some sacrifices have been made along the way. We had a honeymoon pot ready to go and we're just like, we have to, we have to follow Rangers. This is kind of like, hopefully not, but once in a lifetime opportunity and we managed to get tickets to the game. Yeah, so, the pot. Out the pot. <laughs> so the pot's dwindling for the honeymoon fund and we're just, we're going for it for Rangers because it's our team and we love it. Now make us dream. The journey to the final inspired Scottish band St Phoenix to write a song for the occasion. It's been overwhelming, the response for everybody, um, just for the Rangers fans just embracing it, it's been really, really overwhelming. It's doing very, very well, so if tonight goes our way, who knows what's, what's next. These fans have come from every direction to be here, and in just a few hours they hope to see their heroes lift the Europa League trophy. Sheila McLaren, STV News in Seville. And our chief reporter Sharon Frew is a couple of miles away from us here at La Cartuya, where even more Rangers fans are gathering. Uh, and Sharon, how are the fans there? Well, as you can see, in very good spirits. They've just opened the doors here to this stadium where they can watch the match on the big screen. And as you can see, many are now making their way up the hill towards the stands. To my left here, 
is a party zone where many have been enjoying the afternoon. We've seen a few ambulances going in, so I don't know if the heat and maybe alcohol has really got to some. Now, this stadium is on the opposite side of the city where the, the match venue, and that has posed a, posed a huge challenge for police and the transport system, these large crowds going to both areas. And everything, the roads around here have all been closed off for security. So people getting here, taxis, buses, even horse-drawn carriages have been in hot demand here this afternoon, but many have walked here in sweltering heat. I walked, yes. How far? Uh, best part, uh, maybe five miles. And we had uh, three minibuses came through for Albi Fiora, and they're in the fan zone, we're getting back, so we're well fixed. Walked it with Google Maps, the good old Google Maps. We sat in a wee cafe up the road, but, so now we're all happy now. And how far did you have to walk? A million miles. I'd say probably 1.5 million miles. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, a, a large number of crowds now moving towards the stadium. There's a small police presence here over my shoulder, and just ahead of me, I can see police officer and his horse talking uh, to police officer. Uh, sorry, to supporters. And this is mainly to facilitate the smooth manoeuvre of fans up to the stadium. Outside the match venue, well, there's a larger police presence, but the atmosphere at the moment, as you can see, is all very good natured. It's a big day here in Seville, of course, but it's a huge day in Glasgow where hundreds of thousands of fans who couldn't make it to Seville are looking to watch the game. The pubs have been filling up since early afternoon and fans have been gathering outside Ibrox. Our reporter Polly Bartlett is in George Square tonight and Polly, they might not be here, but that's not stopping them. Well, it's not quite sunny Seville, but the party atmosphere is really starting to build here in glorious Glasgow. And for once, the sun is shining on us as well. I've been here for much of the afternoon and the pubs are really starting to fill up. In fact, every single one of the bars around this area is fully booked for the game tonight. Hundreds of thousands of fans across Scotland will be watching the match. And I can tell you now that they're feeling confident. Oh, we're Buzzing. winning, defo. Man. I'm defo winning. Three one. Absolutely one. fantastic, yes. man. Oh my God. Massive, absolutely massive. No words can actually describe. Hoping, hoping for a victory, obviously. Um, get a victory, get us back up where we belong. More than anything, it will mean everything. Everything. Yeah. everything to everybody. Look at this. This is what. Yeah. message ahead of the game tonight though. Rangers are urging fans not to gather in the city centre because the council do not have the refuse workers to clear up the mess. George Square has been prepped though in case of any celebrations. The memorial benches have been removed and the fences have been put up to protect the statues and the flower beds. It is likely though that there'll be an open top bus parade across the city on Sunday if the team do win. That's the day after their, their Europa Cup final, sorry, and that's the day after a cup final tie with Hearts. But we're just under two hours in till kick-off for the Europa League final. John, it's safe to say that the fans back here are just as ready as the fans where you are in Seville. Well, Rangers fans are the only ones to have travelled here to Seville. Eintracht Frankfurt fans are also here in their thousands. They too have been a fine voice across the city these past few days, hoping, of course, that their side will win tonight. We had a lot of contact with Scottish fans on the flight over, coming via Munich. Um, it's, um, it's a fantastic atmosphere, couldn't be better. I think Frankfurt will win. Yeah. One with one goal more. For us and also for the Rangers fans, it's going to be the biggest game of the history, and I think it would just be the, amazing, yeah. We're very confident we're going to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the view from the Frankfurt fans. We'll be hearing from their manager and the Rangers legend when we return to Raman in tonight's stadium a little later. But first, Kellyanne has the rest of the day's news. Thanks very much, John. 
And a very good evening to you. The cost of living has increased at its fastest rate in four decades. Inflation jumped to 9% in the year to April, up from 7% in March. The rise is largely down to the lifting of the price cap on energy bills last month. Here's our political correspondent, Yoon Petrie. With household bills soaring, the Lynx charity is providing more and more grocery packs to families struggling to cope. I'm just living with my two boys and me, and we spend more than 400 a month for the electricity. For many, rising costs means painful choices. I stop using the heater, the heating at home. I bring this um, under blanket heating for me and my boys because we can't put the heating on. If we put it on, the bell will go up. It's things at 30 pence, 40 pence, shops own brand up and buying there, suddenly 50 pence, 60 pence. That's easily your food bill near doubled in a week. How much does this play in your mind? I play this nice job of pretending it doesn't. <laughs> but it's there. Yeah, well, it has to be there because I've got no other support, basically. The rate at which prices rise leapt to 9% in the 12 months to April, its highest level in 40 years. It's global issues that are driving the rise in food, energy and fuel prices for several months now. The Covid pandemic and the war in Ukraine. And during that time, wages have failed to keep pace. It's the poorest communities that are being hit the hardest. And with growing pressure on household bills, there are increasing calls for the government to step in. And the outlook is for inflation to increase further. The official forecast is for 10% by the end of the year, but actually for lower income families, it's already above 10% because of the fact it's focused on essentials. So this is, this is not even the end of this crisis. And for many families, they're going to see uh, another increase in their energy bill in October and potentially even higher prices in the shops later this year as well. New funding is helping create a permanent base for this hub as more families fear falling further into debt. Ewan Petrie, STV News. Well, with inflation soaring, Boris Johnson was pressed to do more on the cost of living crisis during Prime Minister's questions earlier. Labour wants a one-off windfall tax on oil and gas firms. And along with the SNP, they're calling for an emergency budget. Well, let's cross live now to our Westminster correspondent, Catherine Sampson. And Catherine, is there any sign that more help is coming soon? Well, nothing concrete yet, though Boris Johnson was saying today he will look at all measures to help families with this rising bills situation. Um, he also stressed there has been help uh, made available. He would cite, for example, a rise in the minimum wage. But look, you know, debate still rages about what form this new help could take. Labour really pushing this uh, windfall tax on record. Uh, oil and gas profits in the North Sea, they say it could raise billions to help people with their bills. The Prime Minister not directly ruling that out today, which was quite interesting. Um, it sounded in recent days the Chancellor may also be sort of weighing up his options on that. And tonight, uh, Rishi said that the Chancellor is due to address business leaders at the CBI. We've been told he's going to tell them uh, to expect business taxes to be cut in his autumn budget. Now, he says that will help them encourage uh, themselves to invest more in the UK. His opponents would argue these are the wrong priorities. He needs to be doing more now to help households. And today, you know, uh, the SNP, uh, Westminster Leader Ian Blackford, called for an emergency budget and said if the Chancellor can't deliver it, the Prime Minister should sack him. All right, Catherine, thanks very much. OK, let's take a look at other stories across Scotland now. A newly nationalised ScotRail says it's cutting almost 700 services a day from Monday due to a shortage of drivers amid an ongoing pay dispute. The move comes after it launched a new timetable at the weekend. Hundreds of services have already been cancelled since drivers opted not to work overtime earlier this month. And a Scottish charity helping orphans flee the war in Ukraine has brought over four more children to stay in Edinburgh. Dnipro Kids is supporting more than 50 refugees. The majority of the group arrived at the end of March. Well, that's how the news is shaping up. But the big story today, of course, is Rangers going for Europa League glory. So let's cross back to Seville and John. Well, thanks, Kellyanne. Uh, Rahman is already at the stadium, and such is the importance of the occasion, he's even got himself a new hat.
Get your fill of the action. STV Sports, sponsored by Papa John's Pizza. Desperate times call for desperate measures, John. Desperate times call for desperate measures, John. A very good evening from the Ramon Sanchez Pathuan Stadium. This is where the Rangers players can write their names into the history book. They are 90 minutes away from sporting immortality. A Europa League campaign which began all of nine months ago against Armenian opposition ends tonight against German side Eintracht Frankfurt. Giovanni Van Bronker says he and his players will do everything they can to win the final. Here's Ronnie Charters. The 24th of May 1972, Willie Waddle's Rangers see past Dynamo Moscow in the new Camp to lift the European Cup Winners' Cup. That night, the Barcelona Bears were born. Those players, now icons in the world of football, took their chance on the European stage. Now almost 50 years to the day, again on Spanish soil, this Rangers team have a chance to do the same. A huge opportunity for us to, uh, to get the second uh, major prize in history in Europe for this club. So... Uh, we are very determined to, uh, to bring the trophy back with us. We respect the opponent. The opponent did an amazing run in, in Europe as well, so it's going to be an exciting final. James Tavernier has been the heartbeat of Rangers this season. The right back is the top goal scorer in the Europa League and has the chance to become the first defender ever to win a golden boot in a European competition. But tonight, the skipper only has eyes on one prize. I'd like to finish uh, this competition as a winner of the cup, picking up the trophy, and I obviously would like to finish top goal scorer. Um, but my first aim is trying to keep a clean sheet. As well as Eintracht Frankfurt, Rangers will have to contest with scorching heat in Seville tonight. A heat wave in southern Spain, with temperatures touching nearly 40 degrees. Well, it's different than Glasgow, that's for sure. I think at nine o'clock it will be. A lot less, you know, I played many years here in, in Sevilla. Uh, normally we kicked off at, at 10 o'clock, now it's one hour later, but we'll be ready. You know, we, are, uh, we have the protocol for uh, when we play in warm conditions, we're drinking and uh, we'll, we'll be fine. Also trying to battle the heat has been the army of Rangers fans taking over the city of Seville. And the players are desperate to repay their support by bringing the Europa League trophy home. We take a lot of pride in that support that we get and the backing that we get. And I said before, I think we're just the lucky ones that um, are going to be here and be able to play the final because if you like, there's 100,000 people we'd want to be in our position. From Alaskert to Andalusia, these Rangers players have been on their way to the Europa League final. The squad, guided by Giovanni van Bronckhorst, has battled past some of the best Europe has to offer. Scenes of celebration and memories from this campaign are already etched into the folklore of this football club. But tonight, in the Andalusian capital of Seville, in the Ramon Sanchez Pithuan Stadium, 11 men in the red, white and blue of Rangers will hope to follow in the footsteps of the Barcelona Bears and bring a European trophy back to Ibrox. Ronnie Charters, STV News, in Seville. Well, Colin Steen was a member of the Rangers Cup Winners' Cup team of 1972, 1972, which famously lifted the trophy. Then I caught up with the Ibrox legend. How are you feeling about this? Absolutely tremendous. Uh... Uh, we created a bit of history in 1950 uh, years ago, so I think uh, tonight we've got a great chance of repeating that and taking a European uh, title back to Ibrox. How did you manage to win the Cup Winners Cup back then in '72? What does it take to win a major trophy? Well, obviously we scored more goals than the opposition <laughs> uh, at the end, end of the day, which was, was tremendous. Uh, Great game. We were a far, far better team in Moscow Dynamo at the time. But at the end of the game, we, you know, we struggled a wee bit. But before that, we absolutely played them. What was the message from Willie Waddle before he stepped onto the pitch? Well, just to go out and enjoy yourself and, and, and don't leave anything to the pitch. Give 110% and, and that, that's it. Eh? What do you make of this team then? How do you rate their chances? Well, I think, they, I think they're pretty much the same type of team as us. We, we were a bit inconsistent. 
uh, in the league, but they were absolutely tremendous in Europe, and I think they're, they're doing that. They've been absolutely great in Europe, beat a lot of good teams, very good teams, yeah. and I don't think they're facing any better a team tonight than they, they've faced already. And you scored against Dinamo Moscow in Barcelona. How did that feel? Oh, absolutely great. You've scored a, a goal in a cup final. You know, you can't take that away from you, and that's when you... You know, you become a, a sort of legend with your, your supporters and that. And I think the support tonight, and I'm sure the stranger will get, will be absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. It'll be tremendous. Your prediction? My prediction is Ranger will win the game, definitely. And these name, these players write their name into the history books? Yeah, I hope they do, yeah. The sign call, Steve scored one, Wally Johnson two, we might get a, a new hero tonight. Well, Eintracht Frankfurt have been no strangers to playing in Spain on their road to the Europa League final. The Germans have defeated European superpower Barcelona as well as Real Betis right here in Seville. They are managed by Oliver Glasner. It's our third game here in Spain, uh, but the, other, the first two matches were against Spanish teams. Now we play against the Scottish team and we could win the first two games. So yes, we come here with a good feeling. Well, Eintracht Frankfurt will certainly be tough opponents for Rangers tonight. One man who knows all about tough opponents is self-confessed Rangers fan and wrestler Grado. I spoke with him earlier. In 2008, I never thought that this would ever happen again, but to be here with the Rangers fans in Seville is absolutely roasty toasty. Can't wait for this game tonight, cannot wait. You've obviously got a ticket for the man. I've got a ticket, aye. But as I say, I'm actually kind of nervous because this QR code, QR codes and everything like that, I'm a wee bit kind of nervous, but once I'm in there, can't wait. Great. Absolutely unreal. If we win tonight, it's going to be the best day in a lot of people's lives, we'll never forget it. Well, from one character to another, Ronnie. <laughs> Uh, how, how's this week been? You and I have been here all week. How would you sum up the atmosphere? Well, the week has been through about a bottle of a factor 50 this week. Yeah, thanks for that. I would like that hat. But yeah, it's been a marvellous occasion, hasn't it, for these Rangers players and these Rangers supporters. They have done their bits. They've brought colour, they've brought noise, they've brought atmosphere. The Rangers team bus has just arrived here at the stadium. It was met by a raucous support of Rangers fans waiting to guide their team, hoping to help guide their team to a famous night in Europe. For the Rangers players, they were out for walks this afternoon. They were trying to keep calm and composed. We've interviewed Van Bronckhorst. We know he's calm, we know he's composed, we know stuff like that. So that is all about ensuring that it gets onto the players tonight because this is going to be one hell of an occasion. Certainly will be, Ronnie. Thanks very much for that. You'll be taking your seat to the stadium. Well, that's just about all of the sport from me, from me tonight. But we are continuing our coverage on the STV News website and our blog. The, uh, the live blog on the STV News website is up and running right now. Get your fill of the action. STV Sports, sponsored by Papa John's Pizza. So the Rangers uh, players will shortly match warm up, and the Rangers fans will be heading to the seats for tonight's huge match. They'll certainly be hoping that the Europa League trophy will be heading back to Ibrox. Absolutely, Roland. Time for you to get back into the stadium, uh, ready for the game starting. Enjoy your evening. Well, as Polly said earlier, uh, the fans back home are also hoping their European dreams will come true. Uh, and those who couldn't get to Seville are hosting gatherings of their own uh, in pubs and elsewhere. Our entertainment reporter, Laura Boyd, has been joining them. Giovanni! Giovanni! Giovanni from Brokos! Well, it might not be sunny Seville, but sunny Ibrook certainly seems to be the next best thing. And these people, well, they're definitely ready to party. In fact, some have been ready to party outside the Loudoun Tavern since the early hours of this morning. 5.55 a.m. And you've been queuing outside? Yeah. How much does this day mean to you? Everything, everything. I'll, come, I'll bring this trophy home with you. Never been shattered all day since just last night. I've no slept. Fans have travelled from across the country to be in Glasgow today. All the way from Liverpool, just to support them today and just enjoying the moment and having a good time. I live in uh, Northern Ireland. If we win it, I don't know what's going to happen. I might not make my flight home tomorrow. <laughs> and young and old are thrilled to see their team in the final. 
Well, it's the first 50 years since they had major trophy, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, it's going to be bouncing, even though no one, even though no one here's in Seville, it's just going to be Seville. For some, though, the magnitude of the occasion is almost too much to take. Morning Angels! <laughs> I'm ashamed. Morning Angels, definitely. Best day of my life going to be. I just can't wait. It's so, it's so good. I, I, I just don't have the words to explain it. Let me help you, as there's one word that seems to sum up the feeling of all Rangers fans right now. Oh, I'm buzzing. Buzzing. Really, really buzzing to see the game. Buzzing. I'm buzzing, yes. Uh, the place is buzzing. But hopefully it's like pure buzzing. Well, buzzing, man. Buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. What a buzz. Laura Boyd, STV News. They're clearly buzzing all the way from Ibrox to Iberia. This is historic for the fans, for the players of Rangers and for Scottish football as a whole, with Rangers only, what, just over an hour and a half away from the Europa League final. This is a night when legends could be made. The build-up continues now on the STV News app and our website, latest updates on the late news and Scotland tonight. From all of us here and at home, good night. Of history, you gave ourselves to believe. We follow you, so make us dream. Now make us dream. No boy. Now make us dream. Watch out for a sudden temperature drop. Tui Blue Hotels, sponsor STV Weather. Well, at the moment, there is still plenty of pleasant late evening sunshine around and it is remaining relatively dry to start the night. It's not until the second half of the evening that we start to see a bit of a repeat performance from last night. We've got a cold front moving in from the south and west, spring with a more organised band of rain that will be quite heavy at times. We'll also start to see the winds picking up strength before that rain moves in, but the winds will ease once the rain passes. Now, of course, many fans have travelled out to Seville for the big match tonight and by the time we reach kickoff, it will be reaching highs of 26 degrees Celsius by Thursday, highs of 37, and by Friday, highs of 40, which could be record-breaking temperatures for Seville. Back home, though, tonight, it will be mild and muggy, but not quite as warm, dropping to lows of around 8 or 9 degrees Celsius because we are in a southerly airflow dragging in warmer air from the south. Now looking ahead to tomorrow, that rain will continue to clear north and eastwards, leaving behind a mostly dry day for the majority of us with plenty of sunshine on offer. Still one or two showers and a bit of a breeze across the far north and northwest. So temperatures here reaching highs of around 14 or 15 degrees Celsius. Elsewhere in the best of the sunshine, reaching highs of 18 or 19. Looking ahead to Friday, unfortunately, a bit of an unsettled day. We've got an occluded front working its way in from the Atlantic. So longer spells of rain across western areas, turning showery by the time it reaches the east, feeling a little bit cooler, highs of 15 or 16. Bye-bye. Tui Blue Hotels. Sponsor STV Weather.